name is Joanne and welcome back to Flourish. We're so thankful that you've invited us into your family room today. Well, we have a topic today that we're gonna to talk about that you may be able to relate to. And I'll start by saying this, God intended us to live forever in perfect union with Him. He intended for marriages to last forever and for our children to automatically listen to us and to um, walk with the Lord their whole lives. He intended that perfect cycle to continue as we multiplied and filled the earth. Oh, but unfortunately, as we've talked about many times, God's masterpiece is Satan's target. And he is trying to demolish everything that God intends. So marriages sometimes struggle. Parenting has its challenges. At times, our children don't embrace the truths that we've taught them. And at times, it breaks our heart as parents. And we don't know what to do. We feel hopeless and out of control. Do you ever feel that way? Tom and I have had that struggle, and our guests today, Steve and Lisa, have had that, that same struggle, but they're gonna share with us how they have victoriously overcome the struggles of having a wayward child in the strength of, of Jesus. So welcome, Steve and Lisa. Thank you. And then welcome, of course, my beloved husband, Tom. Thank you. Okay, you. let's talk about that. We want you to be encouraged because <clears throat> no matter what problems we're walking through in life, and we've talked about many topics over these last several weeks, we always find our hope in Jesus. He is the answer to all of life's big problems. Um, and you know what? God had that beautiful plan of redemption in place before the beginning of time. Um, my husband and Tom, my husband Tom and I have experienced this. You may remember us saying that we have six children. And do you know at one time, all six of our children had walked away from the Lord. A couple of them struggled in really big ways with drugs and alcohol and things that totally waylaid them. But we are happy to report, it was a long time, wasn't it, it was. Tom? 14 years, I think, right. in praying. Yeah. But all of them have come back to faith in Jesus. So there is hope. But let's start with you, Steve and Lisa. Let's hear a little bit about your story and also about your ministry. All right, well, thank you. Um, you all um, may have listened to the episode um, that included divorce. And so I was on that episode with right. um, Joanne and some of our friends. And so you know that um, I was divorced and God began to rewrite my story. He um, brought eight years later into my life, my husband, Steve, <laughs> and we, we married, but we were unequally yoked. I still was not following the Lord closely, and he was not following the Lord at all. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition, we had, um, he had, I now call him my son, of course, but mm -hmm. we had a prodigal son. Mm -hmm. And so life for him was in chaos and to some degree mm -hmm. to ours as well. Mm -hmm. Just what she really got <laughs> uh. was a prodigal in me, uh, mm. in the sense that I, at the time, really did not see a need for Jesus. Mm. I was self-sufficient. Uh, everything I wanted, I could make for myself. Uh, provision was all self-inclined. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. uh, that's who she really had. Uh, and so she was unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, probably... Uh, uh, three or four months after our marriage, that all changed. And uh, I received a diagnosis of malignancy in my eye that was mm. a fatal diagnosis, typically. And uh, so what went from a self-sufficient, totally confident person was a person who... It's totally broken. Broken, but even beyond broken despair, mm. where uh, yeah. you lose... Um, purpose, you lose uh, even biologic identity with your senses. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're not aware that the beautiful fall that's there, you're not aware of the uh, hunger, thirst, you're just a dead man walking. Wow. And that's who I was, uh, boom, like that over one day. And uh, mm. so we spent days just walking and crying basically. And she, it was a Friday, so she said on Sunday, will you go to church with me? Mm. I would have gone off the cliff with her. Oh, Lisa. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, I went. And uh, <clears throat> her goal was for me to meet with the pastor who had married us a, a, a bit before. And so we went to his office after the sermon. I don't remember the sermon. Mm -hmm. uh, 
<laughs> and um, sat before him, and I gave him great detail of the medical situation I was in. And then he said, well, do you know the Lord? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, let's, uh, how about let's doing a prayer? Do you, would you want to do that? And I said, I don't know what to pray. And he mm -hmm. said, well, follow me. And if you believe what I'm telling you and, and you confess that, then that's, that's the prayer. So we did that. And uh, when that was done, uh, I said, what else do we need to do? And he said, well, go to Sunday school. This is all you got. I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> And so we got up yeah. to leave, and uh, so as we walked out of the church and opened the door, this beautiful fall hit me, and it was, I could smell the flowers, the cool breeze, hunger returned, wow. thirst returned, and I looked at Lisa and I said, let's go get something to eat, I'm starving. Wow. So one minute he was in darkness, he was darkness, and the next he was light. I think I may mention that. And yes. It was a miracle right in front of our, wow. our eyes and in his heart. So wow. that brings yeah. us back to the prodigal situation. So, so before we jump to the prodigal situation, yes. yeah, so yeah. first you have the spiritual miracle and that his Steve's heart has been redeemed and regenerated in Jesus. You believed in the name of Jesus. So that's what Steve is saying. It's so easy that a child could believe. He believed in his heart that Jesus was Lord. With your lips, you confessed him. Yeah, I believe you prayed that prayer of Jesus come into my life and you were changed. You were the miracle spiritually. Yeah. And then physically what happened with your eye? Well, we just, at that point, I just went full throttle forward. Let's go get treatment, tell the children, you know, what's going on <clears throat> and just pursue life. And we did. And uh, I was so confounded by what had happened to me spiritually that I just was all in to read and hear and pursue mm -hmm. uh, everything mm -hmm. I could find out about Christ. Mm -hmm. And in that process, um, you know, I went through treatment and it restored my vision and wow. cured the cancer. I mean, it's 20 cured years Cured the ago. cancer. So, God so, healed you. <clears throat> yeah, so the, the main thing, though, was the... Mm. He told they, everyone. Yeah. Just, he told everyone. His brother and his sister came to know Christ wow. uh, within months of this happening. And then the prodigal son. Yeah. So all this time we have this adolescent uh, child that is just in rebellion. You've experienced mm -hmm. that. You've mentioned mm -hmm. it. Right. And so, so me too. And the thing was, was that as a physician, getting a call at night was what I'd most dreaded because it was never really good news. Right, and, right. And it's either the morgue or the mm -hmm. uh, emergency room or something. And that's what I feared with him, to be honest. Oh. Yeah. And that call came um, on a Thursday um, about 10 o'clock at night. But this time it was, it was him calling mm -hmm. and him asking, wow. you know, can you help me? Wow. Praise God. How old is your son at this point? Teenager? Mm -hmm. Teenager. Teenager. Okay. Probably 16, 17. Okay. Yeah. And um, wow. the crazy thing is what came out of my mouth. I did not know. I mean, it scared me because I said, no, Brandon, I can't help you. Mm. And I was just sobbing on the other end of the phone when, when I said that to him. And then um, I said, but I know who can. And so I, I took him to BSL with me and he and can you tell our friends what bsf uh, is it's a study a bible an intense bible study mm -hmm. where you're going through the scriptures and interpreting exactly how they can be applied and uh and so he joined me in that and uh i'd had three years of preparation for that call wow, wow. if it had been anything less i would have responded out of my flesh and it would have mm -hmm. been as a physician mm -hmm. Right. Right. Very smart man here. He's a doctor. Right. So yeah, you would have been self-sufficient, but God got you dependent on him. He gave you eye cancer mm -hmm. to give you spiritual surgery and, and, and heal mm -hmm. your heart uh, so that in turn, then you could bring your siblings, but also your children to faith in and Jesus have spiritual and have spiritual insight. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Tom, you have a question you want to ask these guys? We have a whole list of questions. Oh, we've got a, we I've got a verse here I've got to read. But yes, this read a verse, is, boy, please. And I think, oh my gosh, every parent should, should um, 
have this verse underlined on a, on a card. It's, it's so important out of Ezekiel 34, mm -hmm. uh, 15 and 16. And this is the Lord talking. He emphasizes this. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, mm -hmm. declares the sovereign Lord. So he's, God is pulling out his title to say, this is from me. You can take this to the bank. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind mm -hmm. up the injured and strengthen the weak. Wow. But the sleek and the strong, I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Mm. And I just love how he goes after those who are lost. And we all were lost. That's right. At one point. Mm -hmm. We were lost. And your son was lost. And God began a divine rescue effort with your son. Yeah. And then it led to something greater than that. Yes. So now how God, well, you can tell whichever story, part of your story you want to tell next, but God has not only healed their son and their family and all of that, you actually have a ministry helping others who have wayward children. You want to talk about that or you want to go somewhere else first? Well, um, I don't, I think we've heard that God doesn't waste our pain. And mm -hmm. so at the time that Brandon was returning and we were studying together oh. and then being baptized together, mm -hmm. actually, um, we uh, had the opportunity to help begin a ministry for other parents who were suffering like we were with wayward children mm -hmm. and rebel rebellion. And so uh, the Second Corinthians 1, verses 3 through 4, mm -hmm. it talks about where when we've been afflicted and comforted by the Lord, who is the Father of all mercy and comfort, that then we can mm -hmm. comfort others that are have any affliction with what we've learned. So we said, yes, uh, Lord, we, we want to do this. You know, I mean, it's hard to open up and, and do that at first, but then you see how the Lord wants to draw other people to know him as well so, yeah. and to give them hope. Mm, yeah. so. I love that. Praise God. Oh my gosh. Um, so the, the prodigal son story in Luke 15, if you're familiar with that, there's a father, he's got two sons, and you can share a little bit more of that story if you'd like. But um, there are pro we're all prodigals, as you said, Lisa, or maybe Tom, you said that we have all walked away from the God that created us. But tell us how God uses that in the lives of not only you, but, but the people that you minister to. And by the way, they minister to people all over the country in the United States. It's not just in the state they live in, all over the country, so many hurting families that you've worked with through the years. Yeah, I think the, <clears throat> I think the, the thing was uh, with the prodigal, um, they're, they're lost for sure, but they're a little different than just lost. And I think of Zacchaeus, the tax collector that climbed up in the tree so that he could beckon Christ as he went by. Yeah. That's, that's a lost person that knows he's lost and is seeking. But our prodigals, they're lost, but they don't know it. Mm. And in fact, they think the other world is lost. And so they're Good very, they're, they're denying that. So it's a really difficult situation. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that um, giving hope to the parents of those children is especially uh, important mm -hmm. because they are off the rails, uh, sometimes in the midst of divorce and, and all manner of crisis. So that's the ministry, is working wow. with the parents. With the parents. With the parents, mm -hmm. right. Wow. Yes. right. Well, you may be sitting there listening um, in your home thinking, you've got a wayward child, like we've talked about, but maybe your marriage is really struggling. And, and you guys have said something I think is so interesting that we tend to sometimes parent from where we are. And there are two different things when we have a prodigal child, we have a wayward child. Talk a little bit about that, if you would. Well, we're talking about marriages and how the prodigal child af affects that, that marriage. marriage, right? And so the stress of having that chaos in your home uh, will very much emphasize the differences in parenting okay. styles. Mm -hmm. And so then each parent thinks they have the answer and then they start mm -hmm. arguing with each other and fighting and just like with losing a child, um, um, you know, physically, you're losing this child. And, and so it can end in divorce or separation or whatever. Marriages and in, can and anytime quickly. you have a prodigal, you have an enabler somewhere. Oh, yes. good. And so usually it's yeah. one or the other parents. And uh, when that happens, the enabler often will side with the, the prodigal against the other parent. And it's just, 
a very divisive sort of mm -hmm. circumstance. situation. Yeah. Well, so say that again. I'm sorry, go ahead. Enabling, enabling, did you want to define a little bit more about what you mean? Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like you, can, you try to solve problems <clears throat> for the child that they really should be able to to do for themselves. So you help them with yeah. their homework, you get them out of trouble, mm -hmm. you you do things that they really should. So you interrupt the uh, process of reaping and sowing that the Lord has in the, mm -hmm. in, in the scriptures mm -hmm. that we should not do. And another thing that unwittingly happens is you really, when you do things for your child, you, um, you give them the impression that they're unable, unable to do to it for themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. so mm -hmm. they lose mm -hmm. self-esteem and become even further. Mm -hmm. And, and you, we usually see isolation in the child, mm -hmm. uh, he isolates himself. He pulls away. He yeah. pulls away from friends, from his family. Goes to his phone or to social yeah. media. It's, it's the first indication of a prodigal child becoming prodigal. is isolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe they retreat to their room, but there'll be a cell phone involved, and uh, they drop out of the normal activities in school. Yeah. Find their own little um, group, and um, well, in fact, it, that that verse you found. Yeah, it's really a, yeah, Proverbs 18, uh, 1 and 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just says, He who isolates himself seeks his own desires, mm -hmm. and he quarrels against all sound wisdom. Mm -hmm. A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his own opinion. Yeah, wow, right. great verse. Yeah. Proverbs 18, 1, 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Yeah. Okay, yeah. remember that, people. Yeah. Proverbs 18, 1 and 2. And you know, Joanne, as a pastor mm -hmm. for years, how many families have sat in my mm -hmm. office yeah. crying, talking about the troubles they're going yeah. through with their child and and the devil will use that prodigal to drive a wedge between you absolutely it, that's his goal right. that's and, his goal uh, a lot of parents don't even survive those things and then i remember this as a pastor we used to say the only person you can't help is the one that doesn't think they have a problem right I mean, not it's everybody yeah. else's yeah. problem so we had prodigals and they didn't have problems mm -hmm. we had problems we, <laughs> we were the problem right and, and i remember at one point i was reading up on some things because we were looking for a life preserver saying lord help us mm -hmm. and i remember making mm -hmm. an announcement to our two boys who were struggling i know you remember this joanne mm -hmm. i said look our marriage is not on the table for you to destroy we are staying we're together, staying together yeah. and we're going to parent together and you're not going to split us up because what they would often do is one would say one thing to us and another thing to dad oh. so try to get us you know on different pages, pages. Mm -hmm. and that's when tom said no mom and i are staying together just so you know you can't work us against each mm -hmm. other we do talk to each other yeah, you know yeah. well you but, make yeah. a really good point because we'll tell we'll you know, we have a, a safe place for people to be, but it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to hear that you're parenting in such a way that yeah. you may be yes. contributing to the problem. Yes. You don't think you are, you know, mm -hmm. as the parent, but we'll tell them, you know, that it's very necessary to get on the same page uh -huh. or better yet, get together and get on, on God's, God's page. page. Get on God. Oh, I love that. Say that again, Lisa. That's really well, key. Well, better than just getting on the same page so you agree on things, it's better to get together and get on God's page, right. learn what how he wants to discipline. I mean, right. he, he disciplines us lovingly, but he disciplines. And so right. we need to follow oh, his yeah. example, which and, will be found in the Bible, which yeah. will be found in the Bible. And which yeah. is often misunderstood. Loving is not considered disciplined by the parents in that circumstance. It's, mm -hmm. it's, that's like harsh. And, um, and what they want to do is rescue their child from this, mm -hmm. and, and understandably. Right, we understand that. It feels like love to rescue, right. but, it's but it's not. So say that not. again, the real love is what? Well, the real love is is learning to discipline your child according to the word, mm. to the truth. So powerful. And not to just go by your emotions, because the emotions are very strong, coming from the heart, and we know what's there, right? Right, so the true. heart and is deceitful, deceitful above deceitful all things. things. And who so, can understand it, right? right. Well, We're quoting a verse from the Bible, from Jeremiah, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Right, that's Jeremiah 17, 9, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. There are a few verses in the scriptures, Proverbs particularly, 19, yeah, yes. 1 through uh, 18 and 19. It says, discipline yourself for in this there is hope. Do not be a willing party to his death. A hot-tempered man must uh, pay the penalty. If you rescue him, you're only going to have to do it again. Wow. Yeah, and um, yeah, the Lord just gives us a lot about reproof, and we, we, we can learn a lot from him. Mm -hmm. We may even put some 
verses in the show notes Absolutely. Or we'll put some show notes in with all those verses. Yeah, so right. afterwards, if you don't, um, yeah, just take a picture with your, your, your phone so that you can get those show notes and look up all those Bible verses. Are you going to say, Lisa? Yes, mm, that's, that's all. That's good. So we have some questions, too. I know, and our time is getting yeah, shorter, so we better yeah. get to those so, questions. So anyway, one of the things I was going to ask is, what are some of the common problems parents have with when, when they're having a prodigal son and, or, or daughter. daughter? And what are some of the common problems? I know one thing Joanna and I struggled with. In America, we had this tradition of sending... Christmas cards with pictures mm -hmm. of the family and then a note about mm -hmm. all that they're doing and they got a scholarship to this college and they're in all these Bible studies and I remember saying to Joanne what would we say on our Christmas card nobody went to jail I don't know you know, it, we, <laughs> know. we were so low we didn't want to right. even talk about yeah. how our family was doing what are some of the common problems well that is a big problem is that parents uh, are so ashamed of themselves for what their child yes. is in, yep. that they they don't acknowledge it in their church, and they isolate they hide it. themselves. They hide it. Mm, they don't wow. share it, and so yeah. that's really what our ministry is about: is to get them mm. to open up, to realize there's a whole lot of people just like them, mm. and that there are principles that will rescue that behavior. Mm, that's and they beautiful. Don't have shame over it. Yeah. Wow. Shame and guilt. Yeah. Shame, guilt. Uh, the fear sometimes, especially like for single women that have a child uh, who's wayward, um, you know, they have all the same things that Steve just mentioned, but they also have a fear that they may be alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, if right. they come out and discipline that wayward That's child, right. that child will leave them mm -hmm. and then they will have no, no one. So. And, the, and the ultimate fear is that the child will commit suicide. Right. Yeah. So that's that's working right in the background. Yeah. Of course it is. And I know that was our fear. We mm -hmm. we were afraid, like you, getting a, a phone call oh, from the police so saying your child, we just found your child dead or something like yeah. that. Yeah. That is, And that is a real fear. And I want you to understand, oh. friends, that uh, we all want you to understand that this doesn't just happen in the world. Yes. This happens in Christian families as well. And I think even more so in Christian families in the sense that Satan wants to destroy us a home that is seeking to follow Christ. So let's get those kids and get them off the That's path right. mm -hmm. and get them in the path of the world and, and cause parents to then bicker and fight with each other and split that whole family up. Mm -hmm. But there is hope in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we only have a little bit of time left, but let's switch it to the hope let's part. Let's leave it on a yeah, positive yeah, note. Yeah, right. yeah, so what would y'all uh, share with that on that topic? Well, there's a difference between hoping for and hoping yeah. in. Mm -hmm. And I think you described that really well. You want to do it? Well, when you're hoping for, you're really just hoping, perhaps praying for a change in your circumstances. And you, you're not in control of your circumstances. In yeah. fact, often your circumstances are being used to draw you to something better. Mm. And so hoping in is hoping in something beyond yourself. Mm. And, and, hope, and we, of course, direct people to Jesus for that. Hope. Right. Well, it says in John yes, 14, mm -hmm. um, yes, D. Six, you know, I'm the way, the truth, and the That's life. Right. I'm the truth. And so when you hope in a higher authority, you, it needs to be the truth. Right. So right. we point people to Jesus as, as that truth. Mm -hmm. And so you always say God has provided mm -hmm. the hope for us. Yeah. He's got the Holy Spirit in us when we know Jesus. He's got his word here before us to teach us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then... In some places, there's other believers that you can join with. So That's you have right. a community around you right. to keep you on that mm -hmm. track. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I love that. Very if you good. have a community of people around you, we encourage you to bring what's hiding in the darkness into the light. That's if you've right. got a child that's struggling, Find someone safe and share with them where your struggles are. You may find that they're struggling as well, and then you can walk through this together. But bring it into the light, because when we keep it hidden, Satan keeps us trapped. He keeps our children trapped and the situation trapped. But when we bring it into the light and share it with others, especially with Christ, then there's the power to heal. And that's what we want to do. We want to see our children here. Were you going to say something, Lisa? Well, I know we're short on time. Yeah, so but we want there to is a story. Yeah, uh, 3,300 3, years ago, Moses, the great leader mm, of the Israel yes, people yes. who took them out of Egypt in bondage and into their new land, um, these millions of people he was leading were grumbling that they didn't like the food and there wasn't any water. And so um, it was really sinful of them to be talking like that. And so... Um, God allowed serpents to come amongst them. 
and this desert environment, <clears throat> they were biting them, hurting them, and actually killing some of the people. And so they repented, and they said, Moses, please talk to God and tell him, you know, we're, we're repenting against the mm. sin to, of, towards you and towards God. So Moses prayed, and God told Moses, fashion a bronze serpent, put it on a pole, and lift it up. And if the people are bitten, they come, and they look up, and they will live. Fast forward. No way before you do that. Oh, wait. That. Sorry. The question here is, did, they, did God answer their oh. prayer? Because the snakes are still there. People are still getting bitten. It hurts. They're made sick by it. But if they look up, they will live. But he didn't get rid of the serpents. Mm -hmm. Circumstances remain. Circumstances remained. are there. Yeah. But there's a solution. That's right. So, so move forward. Yeah. yeah so 2,000 years ago, 1,300 okay. years past Moses into the future, but 2,000 years behind, um, Jesus said uh, just before the most mm -hmm. famous verse in the Bible, 316. John 3:16, mm -hmm. he said these words, mm -hmm. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, must be lifted yeah. up mm -hmm. that everyone mm -hmm. who believes in him may have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And then he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only son, that whoever believes in wow. him, like we talked about, doesn't perish, but will live. Lift it up, Jesus, look to him, and live. Amen. And there's your living hope. There's and there's the living, living hope. hope. That's beautiful. What a beautiful tie to the end. But we want to pray. We only have a few minutes left, actually a minute left, to pray um, but that is important. Take your wayward child, your son, your daughter, whoever that is, right now, let's pray for them. Steve, Lisa, Tom, if the three of you would say a sentence prayer for each yeah. one, that would be great. Thank you. Steve, if you want to start. Mm, sure. Father, just uh, pray that you prepare the hearts for those that are hearing this and mm -hmm. uh, open their minds and their eyes to, to you and just uh, uh, let them uh, know who you are and trust in you and just uh, pray for their prodigals, Father. Yes, Jesus. That soften their hearts. Yes, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, Father, I agree. Soften the hearts of the children mm -hmm. so that they may know you mm -hmm. and bless the parents. Yes, Lord. In this process. And Lord, we pray for anyone that doesn't know Christ, has never given their life to Christ, that today would be the day mm -hmm. that they are driven yes, to the cross, that they yes, would look Lord. up and live and experience salvation and let you begin to repair their family. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, friends, for joining us here today. Thank you, Steve and Lisa, for sharing your heart and your story. Thank you, sweetie. Again, thank you for joining us here. We're praying for your wayward children. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We love you and we pray for you all the time. Thanks for joining us here today. Bye now. Oh, thank you guys. That was